Bhagavad Gita, text 3.35 One should act in accordance with one's own nature, even though in doing so one may appear faulty. This course of action is better than to engaging in any other duties, however well you might attend to them. It is better to die engaging in accordance with one's own nature, for others' duties invite peril. Verses 30 through 35 are a covered advocacy of bhakti, which, as Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Deva Goswami says, is the eternal, super-excellent, natural function of the soul. In the words of Sri Chaitanya, the Jiva soul is the eternal servant of Krishna, Jivaras Varupahoy Krishna Ranityadas, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 20.108. This is ultimately what Krishna has in mind for Arjuna and Nishkama Karma Yoga in which the fruit of one's work is offered to Krishna is similar to Bhakti. In verse 30, Krishna introduces himself into the equation of selfless work as the one to whom one's actions should be dedicated. Mai Sarvani Karmani his commanding Arjuna to fight only overtly appears to be a directive in consideration of Arjuna's warrior nature. Covertly, Krishna commands Arjuna to act in accordance with his soul's interest, in terms of an eternal loving relationship with him. In verse 31, Krishna describes the path he wants Arjuna to dread as his own, me matam, a path that is eternal and arises out of fate, shraddha, devoid of envy, anasuya of himself. Again, in verse 32, Krishna identifies this path as his own, me matam. In verse 33, Krishna subtly plays down the path of jnana, jnanavan api. In the present verse, Krishna says that pure devotion is the natural function of the soul. Even if acting in the soul's interest appears inappropriate from the vantage point of socio-religious considerations, it is far superior to mere moral conformity. In the pursuit of the soul's eternal interest, even death is auspicious. In contrast, pursuance of any interest other than one's spiritual interest is perilous, however perfectly it is pursued. Footnote 6 in this connection, Bhakti Rakshak Sri Tadeva Goswami cites Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.37. Looking at these verses in the light of Bhakti, one can find parallels between this verse and the Gita's conclusion, Bhagavad Gita 18.66. The Gita concludes by telling us that abandoning socio religious concerns and surrendering to Krishna himself is the essence of all dharma, prema dharma. Here, he covertly says the same thing. You should act in accordance with your own nature, as a devotee, even though in doing so you may appear faulty for neglecting worldly concerns. This course of action is better than engaging in any other duties, however well you might attend to them. It would be better to die acting in accordance with your own eternal nature, for other duties invite peril of continued birth and death. The customary interpretation of this verse 
renders it a socio-religious instruction of relative value, in apparent contradiction with the Gita's conclusion. However, there need not be any contradiction, for truth is administered in installments. Understanding this verse in terms of Nishkama Karma Yoga sheds further light on the importance of scripture. Krishna told Arjuna not to think that he could perform another's duty to avoid fighting. Scripture is to be followed. Baladeva Vidyabhushana says that just as one sees with eyes and not other senses, we learn about religion from scripture. Doing another's duty or acting against one's own nature will disturb the socio-religious order. With this, Krishna stops, as if he is getting ahead of himself in his instructions to Arjuna. As Krishna pauses, collecting himself to continue his emphasis on karma yoga, Arjuna asks a pertinent question. He wants to know what it is that causes one to act contrary to scripture, even after gaining knowledge of it.